Welcome students. Let us learn today a poem in English called Invictus by William Ernest Henley. Now, let us talk about the poet William Ernest Henley. He was born on 23rd August 1849 in Gloucester, United Kingdom and died on 11 July 1903, Woking, United Kingdom. He was an influential English poet, critic and editor in England. Though he wrote several books of poetry, Henley is remembered most often for his poem Invictus, a piece that remains in popular awareness. For example, the film Invictus in the year 2009, a fixture in London literary circles. The one-legged Henley was also the inspiration for Robert Louis Stevenson's character called Long John Silver in his Treasure Island and Adventure novel. Some of his notable works were A Love by the Sea, O oh, Gather Me the Rose, I Am the Reaper and many more. Now let us learn something about the poem Invictus. The poem Invictus was written in 1875 and was published in 1888 in the first volume of poems called Book of Verses in the section Life and Death. When Henley was 16 years old, his left leg required amputation, means removal of limb by medical illness, trauma, or surgery. Due to complication arising from tuberculosis, in the early 1870s, after seeking treatment for problems with his other leg at Margate. Margate is a seaside town in southeast England. He was told that it would require a similar procedure in August. 1873, he chose to travel to Edinburgh to enlist the services of distinguished English surgeon Joseph Lister, who was able to save Henley's remaining leg after multiple surgical interventions on the foot. While recovering in the infirmary, that is hospital, he was moved to write the verses that became Invictus, a memorable evocation of Stoicism. Stoicism means the endurance of pain or hardship without the display of feelings and without complaint and also the fortitude in adversity. Now, let us listen to the poem Invictus by William Ernest Henley. Out of the night that covers me, Black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be For my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bulgenings of chance, My head is bloody but unbowed. Beyond the place of wrath and tears, looms but the horror of the shade and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid it matters not how straight the gate how charged with punishment the scroll i am the master of my fate i am the captain of my soul Now, let us learn the poem stanza by stanza. Out of the night that covers me, 
black as the pit from pole to pole. I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. Now, focus on the first line of the stanza that is, out of the night that covers me. The imagery that is, the use of words that create visual representation with ideas in mind is very strong. It is night time. The dark cover covers everything in black. The night here denotes hopelessness and depressive medium in which the soul is lost. The future cannot be seen. The human spirit has lost its normal confidence. Self-assured it is. The second line, black as a pit from pole to pole, reinforces the first. The black pit suggesting a deep hole in the ground, deep depression, a spiritual darkness covering the whole world. The world being that of the poet. And the third and fourth line. I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. Acknowledge that help was given somewhere, somehow, perhaps by a deity or deities, not by any named god or specific creator. The poet says that his unconquerable soul is a gift from a godly realm. It is not quite prayer, but it is grateful thanks. Now, let's move on to the second stanza. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bulgenings of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. There is an interesting start. To the second stanza. Let's pay attention to the first two lines. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud, means when the poet fell in the clutch is very delicious wording for the reader's tongue and basically means cruel grasp. The poet states clearly that despite being tightly held in an awful situation, he didn't once give in and show signs of weakness. Note, the poet is at first subject to the negative situation but responds in positive fashion. We can also say that the poet states that one should not give up. One must keep one's willpower strong and unconquered. One must look for the solution for overcoming the trouble of life. Now, pay attention to these lines. Under the bulgenings of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. The poet suggests that, despite being battered and wounded, there is still no Subservient for self or self pitting, bow of the head. The head is still held high. In other words, these waves of troubles will try to make weak, bloody headed, or even shake to the extent that the feeling of horror may shower upon the person. But what is important at this stage is to feel strong and fight against the troubles. Now, let's proceed with the next stanza. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. Now, Let's look into the first two lines of the stanza. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade. Here the poet looks into the future, into account 
all the anger and pain associated with life on earth and particularly in such places such as hospitals the horror of the shade could be some hellish place of dark where depression lies a menacing thought hangs overhead now look into the next two lines and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid here the reader is advised that there will be no capitulation no giving in in fact the poet has been unafraid through the ordeal which has lasted years and will continue to show a brave face in other words the poet is describing how he had a hard life he has encountered many troubles but has never given up even after being regularly under these evil troubles after his life has been beaten down he still feels strong and hopeful he differentiates the fact that there will be more circumstances in the future that he cannot prevent from happening however the the past trouble years have prepared him for the future ones the message is underlined here is the poet has a clear intention to survive against all odds now let us move on to the last stanza of the poem it matters not how straight the gate how charged with punishments the scroll i am the master of my fate i am the captain of my soul this is the climax to the poem what is the poet suggesting through these words it matters not how straight the gate this means it doesn't matter to him how narrow the gate is this gate is the gate that leads to the heavenly life conversely the second line how charged with punishments the scroll is an inference means conclusion to the depth of hell the punishments being the sins written down during a lifetime now here are the last two lines of the poem i am the master of my fate i am the king of my soul here the poet is affirming that it is me who determine what my future will bring by the way i see life and prepare myself to face its realities the poet also states that whether a person believes in heaven and hell or no the plain fact is that the individual is in charge is the controller of their own fate in other words the poet explains whenever he encounters problems or troubles or such circumstances in life or whatever life throws at him he knows that he is the he is the captain of his soul and can manage his own life just like the captain of a ship that he feels that his life is a big ship sailing through the waves of different circumstances and troubles he is convinced that he can rule his own life and overcome his obstacles more importantly the poem's message is universal in its appeal 
it says that it doesn't matter who you are you can overcome dark times by being brave and never losing faith in your own soul strength let us study the poetic device of this poem poetic devices are tools that a poet can use to create rhythm enhance a meaning of a poem or intensify a mood or feeling they give life to the poem and make it more creative expressive and interesting let us see the figure of speech used in this poem figure of speech are traditionally classified into schemes which vary the ordinary sequence or pattern of words where words are made to carry a meaning other than they ordinarily signify figures of speech in this poem are metaphor personification imagery simile alliteration repetition symbolism inversion let us look into it one by one let us look into metaphor and personification we will first study metaphor a metaphor is a figure of speech that describes an object or action in a way that isn't literally true but helps explain an idea or make a comparison a metaphor shows that one thing is another thing it equates those two things not because they are actually same but for the sake of comparison that is hidden if you take metaphor literally it will probably sound very strange metaphors are used in poetry to add some color to their language henley has used three metaphors the first is the title of the poem invictus here invictus is indirectly compared to pain the second metaphor is in the first line of the poem as out of the dark that covers me here night is compared indirectly to the dark times and hardships pain and suffering the third metaphor is in the line looms but the horror of the shade here shade is indirectly implicitly compared to the upcoming darkness depression and challenges let's look into personification personification is a figure of speech in which a thing that is an idea or an animal is given human attributes the non human objects are portrayed in such a way that we feel that they have ability to act like human beings the poet has personified the night in the first line of the poem such as out of the night that covers me here night is given the human quality of covering the poet now look at the next line in the fell fell clutch of circumstance circumstance are given human attribute of trapping the last example of personification is under the bulgenings of chance as if the chance is human who can be hit by some
Here, the figures of speech are imagery and simile. First, we will look into imagery. Imagery is a figure of speech used by the poet to create image in the mind of the reader. There is a formation of mental image. Look at the first line. I have not winced nor cried aloud creates an image in mind where we can see that the poet remains strong even after all the pain and suffering he had experienced. In the second line, my head is bloody but unbowed is also imagery because it shows that even he was having a difficult time, he still managed to keep his head up. In the third line, black as the pit from pole to pole is again imagery because the black as pit creates an image of darkness, pain, depression in reader's mind. In the last line, beyond the place of wrath and tears forms an image of the place which is free from anger and pain. Now, let's focus on simile. A simile is a device used to compare two different objects to understand meanings by comparing these objects quality. There is a direct comparison and words like as and l-i-k-e -E, like is used. See the line black as a pit from pole to pole. There is a direct comparison between dark night and deep black pit. Let's see figure of speeches, alliteration and repetition. Alliteration is the repetition of same initial sound or sound at the beginning of adjacent or closely connected words. Here in the first line, black as the pit from pole to pole. The sound of consonant P is repeated. In the second line, my head is bloody but unbowed. The sound of consonant B is repeated for the poetic effect and thus it is alliteration. Now let us move on to repetition. Repetition is a figure of speech that repeats same words or phrases a few times to make an idea clear and more memorable. In the first line, black as the pit from pole to pole. The words pole to pole are repeated so it is repetition. In the next line, I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Here the words I am and of my is repeated for the poetic effect and so the figure of speech here is repetition. The figures of speech here is symbolism and inversion. Symbolism is a use of symbols to signify ideas and qualities by giving them symbolic meaning that are different from their literal sense. Symbolism can take different forms. Generally, it is an object representing another to give entirely different meaning that is much deeper and more significant. For example, look at the first line. Out of night that covers me. Here, night is a symbol of darkness, pain, sorrow. In the second line, looms, but the horror of the shade. The word shade is a symbol or it symbolizes pain, suffering, depression. In the third line, it matters not how straight the gate. The figure of speech symbolism is here because gate symbolizes one's path in life. In the last line, I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. The figure of speech used in these lines are symbolism because master symbolizes that 
the poet is in charge of his life and his decision and captain symbolizes that the poet will guide his soul and lead himself wherever he goes whatever he experiences in life now the other figure of speech is inversion 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 is a figure of speech where the normal word order in a sentence or phrase is inverted in inversion sentence or line is not in correct or proper order look at the line it matters not how straight the gate inversion because it is not in proper order the correct order should be it doesn't matter how straight the gate let us discuss the structure of the poem invictus is a four stanza rhyming poem each stanza has four lines a stanza of four lines is called quatrain there are four quatrain which makes 16 lines and or four stanzas has alternate rhyme scheme that is ab ab this evaluation is based on entire poem in question number 1 you have to find out the word from the poem whose meanings are given on screen now for this you have to listen and watch this video lesson very attentively or you can search in your textbook question number 2 is answer the following questions where you have to frame proper and complete sentence for the first one you will get the answer somewhere in the second stanza of the poem for the second question you have c the section of figure of speech and you will get the answer you can write the same answer easily because it is also in the beginning of the poem for the third one you have to see last stanza of the poem for the last question you will be able to find the answer in the first stanza now let's move on to poetic device for the third question you can refer the section of figure of speech or can pick out lines directly from the textbook question number 4 is directly discussed in the section of structure of the poem listen to it carefully and write in your own words with proper sentence formation question number 7 is very important question you have to write critical appreciation following the points given to you it should be in paragraph not point wise you have to frame complete sentence now let's discuss how to write first you have to write the title of the poem and poet's name for this poem the title is invictus and poet's name is william ernest henley Now you have to write about the rhyme scheme. The rhyme scheme of this poem is A B A B. Frame proper sentence and write. In figure of speech, you are supposed to write minimum three figures of speech with lines from the poem. Like in this poem, the figure of speech inversion, and the line which contains inversion. is it matters not how straight the gate in the same way you will write two more figures of speech then you have to write about the central idea or theme of the poem this means what the poem is about what message it gives or we can say that the poet had something in mind when it was written and that something is central idea of the poem Now for the poem the central idea or theme is Invictus is a poem which focuses on human spirit and its ability to overcome adversity you can add more and write to it 
there should be sufficient content. You can, can also write that no matter what the situation is, you will always be in full control of your life. You should have never say die attitude. Thank you for listening.